Hey, how's everyone doing today? My name is Alex Lerman with Low Kick MMA, and today I am joined by former Bellator bantamweight champion Juan Archuleta. Juan, how's everything going today? What's up, man? How you doing? Good, good, good. Thanks for joining us. Um, so let's get right into it. So Bellator versus Ryzen, Japan, Saitama Super Arena. Can you just take a moment to talk about what that means to you to be fighting at a unique event like this? Oh yeah, man. I'm super honored, super grateful, man. Uh, not only are we making history and MMA, but I get to do what I've always wanted to do, and that's fight in Japan. So I'm super excited and stoked and blessed all at the same time. That's great, man. Well, going to my next question. So I know you're training over at the uh, the training lab in California, and I wanted I was wondering uh, how has this training camp differed from previous ones, and in what ways? Um, yeah, I mean, this has been an awesome training camp. I've been uh, training with some of the world's best, at, uh, you know, martial artists out there. And so to be able to go out there and uh, put, put in my all and have this training camp focused on me and putting out the, my best performance has been amazing. That's awesome, man. Well, uh, now a little more personal question here. So uh, just wondering, when you're not training, what do you like to do, activities or hobbies wise? <laughs> Well, so, so I mean, when I'm not training, I'm training. When I'm <laughs> not in camp, I'm training and, uh, uh, and I'm coaching. But uh, no, I like to spend time with my family. I like farming. I gotta. I actually have my own uh, farm out in Northern California in Humboldt. We grow cannabis. We grow heirloom vegetables, and uh, you know, I like to hunt. I like to fish. I like to dive. I like to vacation, and you know, just be an, extre an, an extremist. You know. That's awesome, man. Love to hear that. So now let's shift over to the fight uh, with Su Cho Kim. So based on what you've uh, what you've gone over in training camp, what do you feel like you uh, you can expect to see from him in this fight? Uh, very similar to my last opponent um, where uh, Barzola, he was well-rounded. We put on a high, high-paced fight, and I'm looking forward to doing that this fight as well in Japan, you know, where – they really appreciate martial arts. They appreciate the ground. They appreciate the stand up, the just the overall mixture of everything, you know. And so, to go out there and have a, a worthy enough opponent that's gonna put his offense together as well as mine, I'm super excited. Yeah, man. What what better place than the uh, Saitama Arena to put on a show like that? Yeah. All right. So, um, without giving away too much, because I know you can't reveal all, all your secrets, but uh. Can you just give me a general idea of your game plan for this fight? Go out there and be first, have offense, and go put on a performance. You know, I I don't really have a game plan. It's just go put some, so much offense out there together that the fans are going to appreciate it. You know, I'm a performer. Not only am I, is my performance going to be a blockbuster, so is my walkout. You know, I'm going to pay homage to the people that come before me, the warriors that come before me uh, and my family. And so – you know, they're going to be enthralled and on the way I walk out, the way everything's presented going into the cage. And it's going to be very marketable. Uh, people are going to love it, you know, and, and they're just going to see something that awes them. And then to go out there and put put on as much offense as I can, put my martial arts together, That that's what it's really about. You know, I don't want to go out there and say, I wish I would have done this, you know, because I'm going to do it come fight night. Like anything that presents itself, I'm taking. Love that. Man of the people. And, um, so once the fight's over, I know obviously you're very confident going into this one. How do you see yourself getting your hand raised at the end? Oh, I'm going my, – all my fights, I, I mean, I want to spend as much time in that ring as I can because I never – I don't know if I'll ever be back there again. So I plan on taking this guy's soul. I want to go out there, either make him quit or just show 15 minutes of dominance, you know, carry him throughout the fight and just be in that ring as, as long as I can showing pure dominance. So you're not necessarily specifically looking for a finish. And I, 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 if it presents itself, it's going to happen. Right. Like I, all my fights that you watch, like I rather go the distance. I want, I want to be in that cage. I want to spend the time in there. I don't want to, you know, it, obviously if the guy gets knocked out, he gets knocked out. If he gets submitted, he gets submitted. Like I'm not going to say no to it, but at the same time, I'm going to continue offensive pressure that I train my ass off. Like, dude, I train all pretty much all day, every day. And so I would be taken away from myself, not being able to go into that ring and putting in as much time as I can in there. I love that. That's an interesting perspective because usually you hear most fighters say, oh, I want to get a quick finish, a quick knockout or 
you know, a quick submission. But well, I, that, that's a really interesting. Well, that's thing. insecurities, right? That's guys that are don't are, aren't sure about themselves. Guys that don't love the sport that are just doing it for fame and fortune. Like this is what I do. This is what I'm passionate about. Like I've I've done this my whole life. Like to go out there and compete. Like that's where I'm the most happy and the most calm at is going inside of a cage and spending as much time as I can in there. Because I don't know when's gonna be when it's gonna be my last. You know. I love that. And um, so after the fight, you got any plans for afterwards? Any uh, any plans for 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 any activities or? Any plans after? Yeah, I, so I'm taking my whole family out there, and um, we're all going out there. We're going to spend Christmas out there and things like that. But I want, I'm want i going to be doing some seminars and running some seminars out there and kind of just um, understanding more of the culture and educating my kids on what's it like for other people living in different countries and being able to take that type of education. So as they're older, they get to understand what they're missing out on, you know? That's great. Yeah, that's really cool. Um, got, got the whole family out there to support. That's awesome. Um, so now we're going to segue a little bit into uh, some recent headlines that have made the MMA news. Obviously, in Bellator, we have the recent fight of uh, Rafian Stotts against Danny Sabatello. And obviously, a, a major headline was that 50-45 scorecard, right, turned in. Uh, I just wanted to hear your thoughts on this judging error and recent judging errors in MMA in general, such as, you know, we saw in the UFC card last Saturday, Patty Pimbit versus Jared Gordon. So I just want to hear your thoughts on uh, on the recent state of judging in MMA. Yeah, I, I don't know what what's the big deal about it. You know, you got two guys that, you know, especially with the Stotts and the Sabatello fight, like, okay, like, wh- how are you going to judge each one of those rounds? You know, like, a- as, as, a, as a bystander sitting down and watching it, like, they are close matches. They are close fights. Like, when you take someone down and, like, it, okay, so if you want to judge something, you got to look at the sport that you're judging. If you're judging boxing, okay, who landed, who land, who threw more strikes and who landed the most significant strikes, right? That's how you're going to judge that. Kickboxing, okay, who had the more more effective fights, who had the most output. If you're st- if you're judging wrestling, okay, who got the most takedowns and who had the most riding time. And now if you're doing jujitsu, you got to say, okay, who had the most uh, submission attempts. Who had the most controls? Who had the most advantages? And then, uh, at the end of the day, in jujitsu, the referee picks the the winner, and and it goes off bas- basically decision. Like you have to make that decision then and there. And so you start looking at all these things, like what what are they doing to give the judges enough to judge? You know, and so you can't be pissed off at the judges when they give their um, opinion on who wins a fight. They're judges, like. That's what they're supposed to do. They're giving their opinion on who's winning a fight. So I don't know why people get so offended or butthurt. Like, like if, if anyone wants to be offended uh, by a fight, is me and the Sergio fight. Like, you got a guy that's playing defensive, and you're going to let him win a fight? Like, I put so much offense out there in martial arts. He sat there and just defended and just boxed. That was it. And I went out there. I took him down. I, I went to go do attempts of takedowns. And he just ran the whole time and tried to defend my shots. Like, okay, so you're going to reward a defensive guy? Like, same thing with the Stotts and Sabatello fight. St- uh, Sabatello went out there and tried to put as much offense as he can to get a takedown. He tried to do what he was best at. And then he, when he couldn't, he stood up and strike and made him think about, okay, we're going to get back into a striking match. Then he went back and put on down, down the wrestling. Now, same thing. You got to control before you're able to uh, advance. The only thing that Sabatello should have done was throw a few more punches. So I can see why Crosby gave that those five rounds is because, OK, he's an offensive judge. Or, so he's going to he's going to reward the guy who puts out more offense. If you really want if you're a martial artist, you got to do your homework on who's judging you as well. You can't just say like, oh, this judging so inconsistent. Well, yeah, so is martial arts, motherfucker. Like it's mixed martial arts. There's so many different martial arts that guys favor, that judges favor. Like you have guys that judge uh, boxing, uh, that do Muay Thai, that do kickboxing, that do jiu-jitsu, that do wrestling. Like, yeah, it's mixed martial arts. Like different judges have different interpretations on who wins a fight. So you can't take that away from them. And that's why our sport is so, like, in my opinion, awesome because you you don't know what's going to happen. It's not Dana White's fault. It's not Scott Coker's fault. It's not – all these other ju- are, are promoters' fault that, um, you know, the judging's inconsistent. It's that 
the reason why it's inconsistent is because our sport is an inconsistent sport. It's a it's a mix of everything. So you're not going to get a consistent judging criteria on how people feel they judge a fight and how they judge to win a fight. Yeah, I, I totally agree. I mean, in a, in a sport like mixed martial arts, there's so many variables at play. It's kind of hard to get a, a cut and dry standard for how things should be, you know. But, yeah. So since we're on the topic of uh, Rafi on Stott, so obviously Stott has a big matchup coming up with Patchy Mix. And since you've been in the cage with both of them, lost to Stott's beat Mix, can you offer up any predictions on how this fight will go in your opinion? Oh, yeah, definitely. I mean, I definitely think uh, uh, Patchy Mix is going to get it done within two. You know, he has a little more of a killer instinct than, than Stott's does just because the Stott's is so defensive. And he plays the defensive game with Patchy. He's going to get taken down and submitted, uh, I think, pretty easily. Um, you know, because uh, as you've seen with my fight, on the stand-up, he played very defensive and waited and sat back. And, you know, I just leaned into a kick. It's not that he planned a kick. He just went to throw a single body kick. And it took so long to get there that I headbutted his knee. You know, like, props on him. He won and he knocked me out. I'm not taking that away from him. But someone like, um, uh, Patchy, when he takes you down, he has such a great ground game that he's putting so much to offense together that uh, it's better than Stotts' defense. I see Stotts winning the fight if he could put some offense together and show how dominant he is with wrestling in the stand-up. But to take a guy that's it's working for him right now to be defensive and he's not going to have to change his game, uh, he's going to learn that against Patchy, you know, that – man, I can't just sit back here. I'm getting taken down. I'm getting put in a, tr- a choke. And, 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 you know, and it's overwhelming if you're not ready for it. Gotcha, gotcha. Well, I just want to thank you so much for your time and, uh, and giving your insight on everything here. Um, before we end this off, you want to just plug any socials or any sponsors that you may have? The floor is all yours. Oh, man, I just want to thank the fans for tuning in. And uh, don't miss this history coming up on New Year's Eve. It's going to be the first time it's promotion against promotion. So if yeah, you're a fan of MMA, don't miss out. And, uh, you know, I do want to say thanks for all my sponsors that are supporting me. You will be well, you will be well represented come fight night. Well, man, thank you so much for your time and all the viewers out there. Bellator Horizon, December 31st. It's going to be a banger at the Saitama Super Arena in Japan, so don't miss out. See my man Juan Archuleta go to work. Juan, thank you so much again for your time, man. I really appreciate everything. Oh, yeah. Thanks, big dog. I appreciate your time. Thank you, man. Make sure to subscribe to the Low Kick MMA YouTube channel for all the latest news, event previews, and interviews with some of the biggest stars in MMA.